Well done, what's going on, game leaspers? This is Coach Cheeks, and in today's video, we're going to be going through the 12.10 changes that, well, they got released on Twitter, and we're going to be going through the notes and what they're going to mean for the League of Legends landscape moving forward. And this patch is really going to be the season-defining patch. This is probably what's going to define the meta for Worlds, and maybe even seasons beyond Season 12, so 13, 14, etc. So to know what all of these changes are going to be, make sure you stick around for the whole video, and also make sure, guys, if you want to master any of the roles in the game if you want to master any of the champions if you just want to get better and hit your peak on this game then make sure you check out the game week website link down below in the description and comment section because our challenger players and coaches from around the world <clears throat> upload so many videos a week for our subscribers so join thousands of other summoners get signed up and let's get in to the 12.10 changes now we're just going to start off with what one of the riot devs put on twitter in relation to the actual changes so there's a bit of an explanation here so this dev says that 12.10 is a pretty massive patch, so we're holding off on all balance changes for it. We'll have a much better sense of who needs to be nerfed or buffed after this patch is out. We're expecting to do a balanced micro patch the Thursday of the patch, so a couple of days after it gets released. Now, wide sweeping changes like this just aren't predictable enough for us to know which specific champ will be OP and by how much before release. It's going to be a fun time figuring out new builds and counters and all that, though. He then goes on to answer the question, why are we nerfing all your heat? Well, the worth of every point of healing or shielding is just strictly up with all the resists you're getting. And we'll get into what these resists are shortly. This is doubly true with Grievous Wounds getting nerfed. If we didn't adjust healing and shielding, sustained chance would be absolutely unkillable and buffed way more than their counterparts. We're not trying to swap League into a Mega Mundo meta. Thank goodness for that. So the changes, guys, they're split up here into two categories. So we have champion adjustments and then we have system adjustments. Now we'll start with champion adjustments. So all champions are getting 70 more base HP. Now, 70 more base HP is a huge amount, and if a champion got a buff like this just on its own, it would be incredibly powerful. If we just cast our mind back to Yasuo's HP getting buffed, his win rate easily improved across all Lilos by a couple of percent. So this will be more apparent in the early game, and champions are just going to be less killable before the 10-15 minute mark. But this will also affect the later stages of a game as well, with champions who deal damage based on the target's maximum HP. So for you or for me, just springs to mind instantly because of her vital damage. So base HP up by 70 for all champions. Now the next change to all champions, your HP per level as well as base HP is going up by 14. This means at level 18, you'll have close to another 250 HP as part of that green bar of yours. So if the base HP was early game, this is all about scaling it into the late game. So this also means that champions are just going to be harder to kill, but this still sounds pretty good for a champion like Fiora for instance, who loves champions with a lot of HP. Even a champion like set with his ultimate, you're probably going to do more damage next patch because of these changes. So we've now covered the HP changes. So now let's cover the resist changes. So your armor per level, all champions, this is increasing by 1.2. Two. This means at level 18, you'll have around 20 extra armor. And as far as your magic resist goes, this is going up by 0.8. So you will have close to an extra 15 magic resist at level 18. These changes once again are oriented for the late game. So in the early game, they won't have the biggest impact, but they will certainly still be felt. And it will be harder to get kills for the damage you deal to actually mean something, because I can imagine a top laner with D shield and second wind to be pretty much unkillable. But talking about Doran shield and second and wind, this healing in the game is going to get nerfed. But first of all, we have to talk about champion healing, and this is getting reduced by 10 to 28%. And on top of all of this, what Riot are also doing, champion shielding in the game is reduced by 10%. So this goes back to Riot talking about those champions with innate healing and shielding. They're just getting nerfed because resistances and HP, these are increasing. And if the healing and shielding were to stay the same, those champions would be just unkillable. So this balances out the buffs to those resistances resistances and base stats. So those were the champion adjustments for 12.10, but what about the system adjustments? What about the items? What about the runes in the game? Well, let's start with the items, runes, and summoner spells, in other words, heal, that have healing. So all of these that have healing, the effectiveness of the healing, this is getting reduced between 10 to 28%, depending on what the actual item, rune, or summoner spell is. So once again, this goes back to resistances and base stats going up, right? Obviously don't want the game to be overloaded with healing, so that's why they're taking some of 
delivered out from your items. And just like the champion shielding nerf, they're also nerfing shields in items in rune. So if we think of stuff like area, if we think of stuff like shield bow, eclipse, all of these shields are getting reduced by 10%. And as always, if you have any thoughts, guys, on the changes we've been through so far, if you're excited, if you're a bit anxious about what these changes are going to mean for League of Legends, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Now, moving on, we have to talk about Grievous Wounds as well, because Riot are going to be nerfing Grievous Wounds from 40% to 30% and the enhanced version from 60% to 50%. So down by 10%. And this makes sense because if you're going to nerf the healing in champions and in items and runes, etc., then this means that Grievous Wounds would be even more broken. So items like Executioner's Cooling, items like Oblivion Orb, these being less effective, well, this is just because of how the rest of this patch is shaping up. But it definitely seems justified. Now, moving on, Percentage Pen Item. So we're talking items like Void Staff. We're talking items like Lord Dominus Regard. These are getting reduced by 5 to 10%. Because if you think about it, if Armor and Magic Resist are going up, they're increasing per level, right? If that's the case, then Percentage Pen Items, if they were left as they are right now, so Void Staff, Lord Dominus Regards, Last Whisper, Blighting Jewel, these would actually just struggle because players are getting more armor and more magic resist. But here's the thing, Riot don't want them to stay at the current value because they want the game to be a bit more drawn out, whether it's a team fight, whether it's the laning phase, whether it's the mid to late game. So for sure, percentage pen items will still be useful and will still have their place. But I'd love to know what you guys think of this nerf because this might be a little bit overkill. Now moving on, we also have some changes to turrets and Baron Nasha. So for turrets, the actual attack damage, the outer turrets are dealing, this is increasing from 152 to 278 to 167 to 391, depending on the time in the game. Now the inner turrets damage, these are also increasing from 170 to 305 to 187 to 427. Now the inhibitor turrets, exactly the same as the inner turrets, 170 to 305, 187 to 427. And for Nexus Towers, those bad boys at the end, 150 to 285, that's increasing to 165 to 405. So in the early game, not the biggest buster tower damage, but in the late game, it's going to be much harder to take the tower and also to draw tower aggro and turret dive and make these sorts of plays. So an interesting change there. Now the last change in this patch, guys, is to Baron Nasher. So the attack damage, the base AD Baron gets is going up by 25 from 125 to 150. And in terms of the attack damage it's getting per minute in a game, it's going from 8 per minute to 10 per minute. This means when it spawns at 20 minutes, Nasher will start with 350 attack damage rather than 285. And this will just increase as the game progresses, meaning that it's going to be more challenging to secure the Nasher and actually do it, especially when the enemy team is alive, because you will be taking more damage. There is just more risk attached to Baron and of course taking towers and split pushing. So those were the changes guys coming in patch 12.10. Once again, let me know down below exactly what you think of the changes that are about to hit the rift. Brace yourselves, it's going to be interesting. And until tomorrow's daily season 12 upload, this has been Coach Cheese. Peace.